Siri, Apple's voice assistant, and Apple's voice and assistive technologies in general are getting some major love in iOS 13, including a synthetic, more natural sounding voice, new intent so developers can add Siri support to Maps apps like Waze, and audio apps like Overcast, Audible, and Spotify, and even full on voice control so you can navigate your iPhone, iPad, or Mac with basically the will and the word. And of course, Shortcuts is becoming a built-in app and is adding support for a bunch of new functionality, not the least of which is the ability to accept conversational input. Yes, now if you tell Shortcuts to order you a pizza, it can ask you which of the last four pizza orders you want to repeat and then deny or encourage Hawaiian as appropriate. To dig deep into how it all works, I asked Matthew Casanelli to join me. He was actually on the workflow team when Apple bought the app, had written the documentation and filled the gallery, but left just as Apple was transitioning into shortcuts. Why? So he could help evangelize the technology from the outside. And that's just exactly what he's gonna do with us here today. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. Matthew, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Hello, thank you for having me. So Apple announced a bunch of new and really cool things for Siri shortcuts, but I think first and foremost is that the shortcuts app itself, you no longer have to go get it from the app store. It's built right in now. What does that really mean though? Is it system access? Is there something else that's great about that? Um, I think the biggest thing is that everybody's going to have shortcuts on their phone when they update in the fall. So it basically means that there's like a billion more users now than there was before, I think. Because they're in a billion pockets, y'all. A billion pockets. <laughs> but there also is some extra features that it means that um, now your shortcuts can just run using the triggers of the shortcut name. So it doesn't have to do the whole like record a phrase and then that's your trigger phrase. It'll just use the name of your shortcuts. And then what that also means is that everything that was managed in the settings app before is now managed inside the shortcuts app. So there's not kind of this split between the two of them. Instead, it's all just organized in the shortcuts app. So one of the other big changes is that Siri shortcuts are becoming conversational now. Uh, and that means that it's not just output, but there's input too. How significant a change is that? Um, this is a game changer, I would say, um, because I think a lot of apps last year wanted what we got this year. And so I don't think people really dove in headfirst as much as I wanted them to. Um, it was a lot of limitations before, but now you'll be able to work either with the shortcuts actions or even just third party apps. And in shortcuts, you'll be able to like adjust all the parameters and take data in between different ones and send them out to n the next app and stuff like that, which will be really powerful just for creating advanced automations. But it also means that Anything that you can do in shortcuts also does work in Siri. Things like dictating into Siri where you, you want to add a task title and then you want to like add that in and do your whole fancy shortcut before you would either have to use like the built-in Siri ones, which were limited in scope, and now you can just do it all with Siri. So it's, it's kind of like uh, the whole voice revolution thing, I think, is kind of here in a, in a subtle way that isn't super obvious. And you mentioned something else is that you can take output from one app uh, and send it into another app. So does that mean, for example, if I come home, I could say if my lights aren't already on, turn them on halfway and text my significant other saying, hey, I'm home. Yeah, basically that exact thing. Or it could kind of be like, what do you want to say to them? And then you could say your message out loud to them each time instead of having to like have just only pre-canned messages, which is nice. But yeah, and it seems almost like dominoes. Like you start off something in one app and it gets knocked down and then it goes to the next app and knocks something down. And do you have a sense of how sort of complex these could get? I think the sky is the limit right now. Like you can do, so, so there is some distinction because um, shortcuts also got automation triggers, so you can run shortcuts at different times of day or location. And there's a difference between your personal shortcuts that utilize your device and then the home shortcuts, which can do things like start playing something on the home pod when you get home. So it's kind of, it's going to, it's like overwhelming to try to process what's possible because a lot of like small everyday things now, I think will be a lot more useful for people where it can either show you a notification to run your shortcut or just kind of happen at certain times a day and do more things than just like turn on the light. Um, but it's going to, it's going to be, 
it's like overwhelming right now because it'll all work on HomePod, it'll work on AirPods, um, Apple Watch stuff. Again, I haven't tested it, so we'll see how well that works, but I'm going to be filing lots and lots of feedback telling them what I want. Before people already had a little bit of hesitation or maybe thought that shortcuts was a little too computery for them, and now it can do even more. So how, if people are interested in it, but now they're getting like, they're listening to you now and they're saying, oh my God, this is just so much beyond what I'm capable. How do you suggest that they sort of approach it? Well, that is also one thing that Apple addressed because I think a lot of how shortcuts worked before was a little bit confusing because how the actions connected to each other was kind of implicit. It would, like one action would produce an output and then if it worked with the next action, they would connect with this tiny little line and that's kind of all you really knew to like, all you had to see of like, this is working or not. And so now what they did is they also redesigned all of the actions inside of shortcuts so that they read clearly, like do this with this in this next spot and stuff like that. So anytime you connect two actions together, the the output of the one above will be shown in the first one, like explicitly every single time. And so this is like, now's the time for people to start learning shortcuts because it is much more clear and much more functional on a daily basis. And, and they so also, they put uh, the widgets right, if you choose, you can put the widgets right on the iPad home screen now, the primary home screen, which means you could have your shortcuts right there all the time just to tap away. Yeah, that's definitely going to be in the top of my list. Um, yeah, I just made a video about how you use the shortcuts widget stuff. So that's like a perfect a perfect use case because then it's all it's already on your home screen. The, uh, the other thing you can do is you can add shortcuts to your home screen, which you used to be able to before, and they were kind of bookmarks that would open Safari and then run your shortcut. And so it kind of would like flash and be a little... It's just not very smooth. And now when you run a shortcut from the home screen, it will just pop up and start running right away in shortcuts, which is really cool. A lot of people are slightly disappointed that they didn't add um, folder organization in shortcuts because somebody like me has a thousand of them in this giant list. But in theory, you can add them to your home screen and then put them in folders. And so I think the whole the whole home screen thing is going to be an interesting change because not it's like you have both the widgets right there and you can add all your shortcuts to the home screen. So. That's going to be awesome. So there was, I was trying to go through because they didn't give it a lot of time during the keynote. They gave it some more time during State of the Union, but I was looking at all the slides and there were, there were just a bunch of little Siri things, like even better recommended shortcuts on the Apple Watch Siri watch face. But was there, there was anything else that stuck out to you um, in terms of Siri shortcuts this year? Um, so one thing that's actually pretty amazing that they added is along with the whole fancy new pointer and mouse support and accessibility, um, you can add any extra buttons and have them run shortcuts, which this is amazing for people with accessibility needs and also for power nerds like me who are gonna just use it for everything. But um, I even found on my Logitech mouse that the left scroll and right scroll could be set as different buttons too. So I was doing things like setting up, uh, take a screenshot with the left one and then the right one masks it in a frame automatically. A lot of the stuff is just kind of in the shortcuts app and they didn't really cover it, but um, there's two main actions or like groups of actions that I think are gonna be really cool. One is just called set playback destination. And so your phone can connect to a HomePod or even things like your Bluetooth speakers automatically without you having to go into Bluetooth and change it or just like use the, um, multiple select like the device control thing in control center. Um, so that's going to be really cool because it can be like when I get home, play something on my home pod or like read out the news. Um, and then the other one that's also cool is the re Apple TV remote actions. So it's, it's slightly weird, but basically you can like automate how the, you would use the remote and open something like Netflix. So you can have like a thing that's, that's like truly movie time and it opens up your movies and, and changes all the lights and, and you can, chain that all with shortcuts and your home automation triggers. You can check Matthew out on Twitter where he's always super helpful with any and all shortcuts questions. And also on his YouTube channel where he posts in-depth videos on how to make it all work. Just type in his name, Matthew Casanelli, and you're there. Thank you so much, Matthew.
Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Now, one of the keys to shortcut success is its user experience. And that kind of stuff doesn't just happen. It's very carefully, methodically designed. I've interviewed a few UX designers, including one of the original Siri UX designers, and everything from how the verbosity would ramp up when you weren't near a screen, like yelling at your phone from across the room, or simply didn't have a screen, like HomePod, or couldn't look at the screen, like with CarPlay. I never noticed, but when she explained it to me, it all just made total sense. If UX, user experience, is something you're interested in, Skillshare can help. It's an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in video, audio, business, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Mariaki McCloskey has a course called Intro to UX Fundamentals of Usability. It gives you the frameworks, tools, and tactics to create a standout user experience, including what it is, how to design for it, how to evaluate what you design, and how to report findings and make recommendations. Join the millions of students already learning with Skillshare today and get two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. To sign up, visit the link in the description and start learning today. Thanks, Skillshare, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Now, one thing we didn't get this year, at least so far, is shortcuts for Mac. It was one of the rumors making the rounds, but it just didn't pan out yet, and that's a shame. Sure, we have Automator and AppleScript on the Mac, some of the most powerful workflow technologies available anywhere. But shortcuts for Mac, even maybe especially a Catalyst aka Marzipan version of the iPad app, would not only allow for far more consistency, which is totally a user experience benefit, it would provide for Mac-like editing experience, which could be a huge boon for a whole swath of users. But there's always next time. So hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you think of shortcuts in iOS 13? Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.